Welcome to the Cosmic Room dedicated to Carl Sagan. When I wasn't doing other pieces of art, photography, artography, Hollywood heads, tronics, leather, all those other sculptures and all those other chapters, I began in 79 to create what I call my fantasy planets, which is called the Cosmos, dedicated to Carl Sagan. Uh, these particular pieces were made out of a lot of the uh, broken glass that Marvin Hadley collected. And then, of course, putting it together. One of the most exciting things about the things that I do in art is that I don't just use ordinary products or media. I'll mix my own paints, and uh, these are the four of the major Cosmos pieces. These pieces, to me, are my imaginary fantasy planets. Where my co in my in my idea of who lives on these planets, I feel that some of the things that we do through our wearable art and, of course, our Hollywood heads. So when media starts picking up the things with uh, about my artwork, I portray these particular pieces like Saturn and Mars and all those wonderful things. So if you can come in close, you can see some of the, the colors and. Uh, we're going to be putting music to this, and this, this is the planets that I feel that are out there. And as an artist, I'm able to create that through uh, my uh, vision and, of course, through our higher powers. And we respect our God for giving us the creativity. And one of the greatest things is to be able to share it with all. So um, this particular piece was made from broken stained glass actually that Marvin Hadley collected for his museum and I he gave me all of these things and of course I mixed marble dust and broken mirrors and glass and nails and all kinds of wonderful things styrofoam uh, anything that you that gave me depth and dimension and I really don't know I look in my studio and I pick up certain things or people give it to me uh, this particular piece is another Cosmo and this happens to be, Marvin told me, the, uh, the um, crystal from a German submarine. So I, I embedded it here, and of course, the movement through um, color and design and glass and all kinds of good things. That's what assemblage art is all about. Metal and tin and all kinds of things. Now, when these pieces are put under different lights, they, come, they explode. This happens to be an egg crate. See, and then of course, a lot of this, this uh, particular sculpture was done with fire, burning out the areas here to, and giving depth and dimension from the particular uh, pieces. Um, I sometimes don't even use paintbrushes. I remember this piece was done scratching with a, a rake. So whatever comes up and you see in here and all the different colors and, and uh, lights and all that good stuff. Anyway, these are the planets, and if you see close-ups of them, then take a look at that particular piece. That has an awful lot of, that's very Hollywood, and as you saw, the different shadows and the different things come together, the lighting, it makes a big difference. I'm going to show you what, what, what different lights do uh, create on this, these particular planets. See the difference when you light them differently, from low to high colors. There's no light, there's more light. See how turning the lighting, bringing it up and down, shadows. See how the mirrors reflect. So it's a whole nother dimension on how a piece can look. And the actual sculpture within these pieces has a lot to do with the, the, the reflection of the color, the design, and of course putting this kind of thing to music and adding shadows and lights and darks. You have not only a piece of art, but you have an environment that can make people happy and more than that to bring out the creativity because everybody uh, is an artist in their heart and soul, whether they create or they appreciate the creation.